Alright guys, so Puka back here for another cast here. Uh, Box is not going to be with us. Um, we did verify though that people in the turret, there is a person spinning in the turret um, if you're referencing the last VOD. So, um, anyways, running on the top left, it'll be Pain DKT. Uh, I've never really heard of this guy, but he's a C plus Protoss and his opponent will be the Brown Terran. International Federations, I'm untouchable. Cryok here. Cryok is a force to be reckoned with. Now, if you guys watch a lot of my casts, you should know my other, probably my most frequent co-caster would be um, BMW. BMW is um, the leader of that clan. So, uh, yeah. Um, I have used a pretty high level clan. I think they're 0-2 in Gamma Cup, though, last time he told me. So, uh, they're having a little bit of difficulty in Gamma Cup, so let's show him some love. Now, he's from whatever DE of our country code is that I, I maybe Germany maybe I don't want to assume anything though I could be completely wrong and uh, the fanfare is over that means we go back to traditional brood war sounds here because that's always important as well and uh, yeah I'm a little bit disappointed we're back down to three viewers but you know that's okay I think I think our max hit tonight has been nine, but then the majority of these video, majority of the views are probably YouTube videos anyway. And again, I'm doing this purely for the shimmy and the community itself. So if the community doesn't want to watch them, that's okay. But they are there if someone would like to view them. Uh, that being said, it looks like DKT is going to be scouting the wrong location here. DKT is also going to be getting gas. Things are looking um, pretty standard. <sighs> Nothing out of the ordinary. I'll point out anything that tends to be very out of the ordinary here. Um, out of the ordinary. Now, for any person that's more, like new to Brood War, what? Because um, this is pretty much as far as my analysis goes. Um, the most standard build, probably in this matchup for Protoss, would be getting a Gate at 12, then the Simulator, then Cybercore, which finished around 245-ish. And then you could follow up with a second gate if you'd like to, and then just, you know, rally over Goon, see if you can, you know, do some damage, and then you can follow that up into an, exp an expansion. That's when it gets a little bit more diverse, but you normally do, like, a two-gate Goon pressure. Cryok can do uh, a couple different things. He can go a two-fact, he can go an FD push, he can just go for um, a Siege expand. Um, Terran has a little bit more options. Um, I mean, Cryok obviously could just go for an expansion himself, but um, you are at a little bit of a risk um, of not knowing what your Terran friend's doing. He could be, you know, powering up a lot more than you are. He may be getting a lot more greedy, and then you want to punish that. So it's always better to get units out on the field than no units. Almost you're getting, like, really greedy by going, like, double Nexus build, which you'd probably just die outright to an FD push, but you could try it. And now I'm suddenly lonely without Box. I've, I haven't talked to him um, quite some time. It's always nice to have him back on. Um, I wouldn't get used to him. He, he's not very knowledgeable in StarCraft uh, or Brood War. Rather. Um, he's, he's a chill guy, though. Um, we like to have him on. And uh, nice denying of the scout, though, by DKT, though. So um, also to note, though, that these players, according to their, to their I-Cup ranks, are of similar skill. I mean, there is a gap of skill between you know, C+, and B-, minus because there are two different ranks, obviously. But I'd say it's a probably even matchup, at least in terms of just purely looking at on a skill-on-skill -skill basis here. I don't really know Cryak's play style. I know games likes to go, a game likes to go... A lot of one base play, um, very aggressive Terran, and it makes sense if you're a random, you just want to pressure as much as you can, um, and it totally makes sense, because you don't know, when, you, when you're playing against a random, a lot of players don't even, uh, most players don't, if you're on like fish or something, they'll just leave if you're a random, um, because a lot of time players will just rush you, um, and you don't really know what kind of cheese you have to really go up against, do you have to carry, it? do you have to worry about a, you know, a proxy can rush, do you have to carry about to get, the way you handle each of those is very different. It's very hard to handle every single scenario. So that's why random isn't normally thing. That's probably why race picking is probably more there than an option. All right, so it's going to be an FD push from Cryok here. Not a bad move. Um, he's going to be getting Vulture Speed here. FD push means fake double push, if you're wondering. Um, but this is actually nice what DK t uh, DKT is doing right now. If DKT, well, it's range done. Yeah, because range is done, he should be going in there, you know, kiting a little bit. That's what he wants to be doing here. This really just thwarts an FD push. Um, you know, he's not doing as as much as 
some other Protoss is might doing it might just because of his APM. Um, you know, it might it might be too much of a toll on his APM. But this empty push though is getting a little powerful. He may set up bunker. Um, potentially he could repair this. Um, get some spider mines. Um, no. All right, so he's just gonna pull out. Um. I think he feels he's done enough damage. Um, there was really no way for him to push up the ramp, though. Um, something that uh, Elegant has said in Gambit Cup Cast that an FD push really will never, will rare, if ever or rarely ever go push up a Protoss ramp. It's just there to put on some pressure right there. I mean, if you just saw it, it, it it's just there to put on pressure. Um, Looking at like a purely as just of like what has been done, not too much. I mean, literally speaking, it, it was just like, well, I just sent over units there. I killed off. I, I damaged some goons, and that's pretty much all I did. I put down a I put down a spider mine that he deactivated. It appears, and yeah. So I mean, much. I mean, on paper, it didn't do too much. In more realistic brood war terms, it it. It just puts on some pressure to your opponent. It pushes them back. It allows you to set up some more stuff, i.e. your bunker. Um, it gives you some more breathing room. It allows you to be in control of the of map control for a little while. I mean, he's forfeited it now. Um, and we'll see how uh, DKT reacts to that. DKT is going to look like he's going to be engaging here. It's not going to do too much. Um, this isn't going to be a siege expand where he's going to have the ability to really potentially just continue to attack this bunker or try to take it down. There's so many tanks out already. Um, he's attacking the bunker though, where the tanks aren't going to be in range to kill it. Um, uh, the bunker's at risk of going down though. He's going to be sieging up though. All of this is going to go down. No, it leads with one HP. And uh, yeah, look, I mean, Croc's going to be totally fine. Three, three, three siege tanks in the back. Um, DKT has a couple options here. We have actually a, a Cryox sending over a Vulture already. Probably should rally this, this goon up there just to stop that from really doing too much damage in general. Um, because it's it's just annoying because he can't rally probes or anything over there. He can't put down cans. He can't pile on block that. But there we go. There's a goon, uh, goon up there to help defend. He's just rallying units over here. Eventually, Croc will push out with a couple tanks and stuff and it will fend this off. This, obviously, again... This isn't really doing too much. It's just setting up a contain that really, you know, thwarts, you know, map control. Even though that this vulture has somehow gone through that. But, no. Uh, I mean, this is by no means he's going to pressure. It's just standard brood where shenanigans going down. There's a reason for it. It's the reason for getting map control. It's reason to allow him to get up his expands. It allows him to stop any kind of vulture run buys. Or try to stop. But um, is this gonna be a hard push, or is he just re or is he just gonna be resetting up here? He's more seeking up here. Oh, but oh my, DKT though might be able to snipe out these tanks right here. Looks like he's gonna be trying to go for it, but these spider mines though. There's a nice spread on the goons right here. He's gonna snipe up all the tanks here. There's nothing left here though. This is absolutely, absolutely phenomenal by DKT though. F you know, going right in at that time right there. Possibly another reason why you want to keep up those uh, dragoons here. But there's the spider mines to stop any kind of reinforcements here. The SCV should be able to clean this up. SCVs are pretty good against dudes. Um, and they're the, um... Well, he's got to continue to rally down here. Um, but once tanks get on the high ground, though, I think he's going to have to be pushed back right here. But this is actually really great uh, for DKT, though. DKT is uh, in a little bit of a pickle right here. Um, and, well, I mean, Cryak, rather. D um, has put... DKT has put Cryak in a pickle right now. He'll be, he'll be able to, you know... Adjust, but this is really helping him allow him to probe up a little bit more, allow him to maybe take a fourth base that he liked to. Cryoc is up off, off of four bases now, off of four gates, so not a bad at all right here. I'm also wondering about the probe counts here. Um, while we're looking at this, 41 SCVs to 35 probes, though. So, um, to put that in perspective here, guys, DKT has been has been really really cutting probes up to this point, so. You might think that DKT might be in such a really good, phenomenal position. He killed off tanks and stuff like that. That's that's great. But now look at this though. DKT went in there, killed off a couple of SCVs, but he's not. He doesn't have an economic lead anymore. He's killed off SCVs. That's not bad. But DKT now doesn't have. He's not gonna have an equal. He might now be on an equal footing. 42 to 45. So he's he's trying to do that, but a couple idle. 
you know, probes right there. He's making a ton of probes at once right now. But look at this, though. Because of there isn't as many goons out now, vultures can slip through here. Um, maybe not through this back door right here, but uh, now he's going to be able to push through here, and then we're going to have a counter push by Cryon. And again, I mean, that push was, you know, entertaining to say the least, but when you're looking in perspective here, I don't think he really did that much. When you're looking in terms of the economy and stuff, he's killed off a couple of SCVs, killed off the tanks, which is, you know, a big number, especially when Tyrants only have two bases, don't get me wrong. But now this allows for Vultures to get in here and do some more economic damage here. And with Cryok being the player of his caliber, he can, he, he'll have the ability to set up mines, he'll have the ability to get Vulture run by, he'll be able to position himself in such a way that he'll be fine. King did a little bit of exposed here. Um, Zell's gonna be able to close him distance and clean him up, which is a little bit poor posi uh, positioning from Cryok right here. A little sad, nice mind drag though, which will soften them up here, but we have more um, reinforcing goons from the south side that will able to clean up the rest of the, uh, this Vulture here. So, both players kind of trading right here. Uh, it's hard to say who came up on top. I think it comes down to how cautious now Crocs with, with his tanks here. Now he's sending over three bear tanks without any kind of vulture support here, and he's gonna let them just kind of go down there. Um, but he's gonna be able to, you know, kill off a couple goons right here. Looks like he's gonna be sending them home right now. I like that decision right now. And uh, yeah. And we're gonna try to have a vulture run by happening over here though. Kind of stopping right there, but has found a sweet spot. He's gonna he's getting he's being aggroed to the cannon only getting I think one probe kill in the mix right there um, I really wish to have I could have a um, a uh, you know units uh, units lost tab here but that's okay and Krog is a very aggressive Terran I will give him that he's still only off of two bases here which maybe if he's off of four facts he's, he's off of six facts he's going mainly vultures um and, okay, see, so he has a third base coming up now, okay? I was gonna say, he's all in pretty much up to this point. Um, but he's continuing to trade effectively, which is the important thing. Um, now, of course, he may have waited. The protest army might be bigger. He may need more tanks here. I, I, I am honestly, I'm, I'm torn to say who's ahead. I mean, 50 SCVs to 52 probes. 80, 94 supply to 84 supply. So, protest has, a, a, I know, a deficit in terms of their army. If, if, you, if you look at strictly their armies right now, you're going to be seeing see, where armies are, you know, you know, 11, 11 goons. What? So 11 goons versus 12 vultures and 7 tanks that are out on the field. So Cryok is looking like he's going to get the upper hand here. He's starting to cut the map. He's getting a lot of mines spread out. And this game has been very entertaining, to say the least. Looks like they have a hidden expo coming from DR DKT right now. He has a, a lot of gateways. But does he have the economy to produce out of it? I'm looking at the saturation. It appears that he will once he gets, especially if he gets up that third gas going here. But there's really no, for, right now with this current army right now, DKT does not have the ability to really engage this army head on. And because of that, um, especially with these spider mines here, um, but these tanks though are a little bit um, out of position here. Okay, so the, um, or these funny openings right now, DKT is, and it appears oh, a lot of losing a lot of Dragoons here, and Triax gotta take that battle convincingly. Sorry about losing my um, mouse all over the place, I'm not trying to. Uh, oh, pretty entertaining game. Um, definitely, I'd recommend this cast to anyone, at least so far. Um, this game pretty much the most action packed 14 minutes of uh, Tremors and Zerg. I've uh, Terran versus Protoss I've seen, but these things are going to get cleaned up right here. One thing I, I would say Krak might be able to do a little bit better is position his tank so that Zealots don't just come in here and take him out. But um, we'll see. Uh, with the extra fourth base, though, we'll see if that's going to kick in. Because remember, I mean, Krak is having a, a steady, a steady, a steady army. I don't think it's gotten much bigger than it initially started with. That being said, he's cutting, he's kind of cutting off reinforcements to the third in some ways. Um, generally speaking, you'd probably want to keep your army as protests around this area to keep off. You know, you could you start defending off this fourth base here, but the vulture does get in right here. Will he see the nexus? Um, probably the gateway should I identify that though. And it doesn't look like the goon will die though. He's going to be trying to pressure this though, but there's a lot of zealots here. But are the vultures going to be in position here? The tanks are, uh, the zealots are going to go straight for the tanks there. I like that by DKT, and uh, there is a nice spread from Cryok right here, 
it, it's hard to say, but I think DKC is going to take this. This army out at least. Now, back at home base for Cryok. Um, not too much. Uh, we're up to six factories, like three base, standard three base fighting spirit style. Um, but 114, um, again, it's kind of, he, Cryok, I want to say kind of went all in with that. Um, it just didn't work for him. Cryok didn't have the ability to really do the damage he needed to do. It was entertaining. Uh, but again, it's kind of like the same thing we said for DKT. If you're looking at the supplies now, um, 58 to 58, but Eagles and Harvesters here, but if you look at the armies, 15 Zelts, 10 Goons, uh, and versus 7 Vultures and 5 Tanks, um, that's definitely going to Protoss' favor right here. We're 15 minutes in the game, no Arbiter tech to be seen, though. Um, and kind of showing exactly kind of how, um, in Gambit Cup, how, um, Artanis for reps, I think it was. No, no, Sir, uh, Sir's Artanis, I think. Kind of showed how uh, Protoss can go without um, Arbiter attack somehow. But uh, this is really, really nice. But what DKT is doing, stalling the Slur base for as long as possible. 14 SCPs have been killed off in general from this entire engagement here. Go giving you perspective how many um, SCPs uh, Arbiter is 62 to 44. That's a pretty big gap in between that. Not to mention that that's a whole other base saturated for, for uh, DKT right here. And just barely Cryok's gonna hold on to his third base here, but more reinforcements are coming from DKT right here. Going, pushing up that ramp immediately. And it looks like he's just gonna have more than enough goons to go in here. Plus one versus plus one um, upgrades are the same right here. DKT just gonna be, does have the high ground advantage right here. And I think he's gonna be able to take this. More SCPs are transferring though, but not in a good way, guys. This is just gonna get easily picked up by the Zelda. Another just handful of SCPs are going, or just falling apart here. DKT is playing, you know, brilliantly right here. And if you get DK, paint DKT, man, this guy is good. Um, I mean, just how he's gonna do in, T uh, in Clan League, but, uh, whoo. All right, DKT is gonna be going here again. And again, these tanks are just, are always being susceptible to Zealots by Cryok here. It's a little disappointing. Um, but the sheer amount of, uh, of uh, tanks that Cryok has lost this game just from, like, losing two tanks to, like, one, one Zealot, it's, it's disappointing. It's poor control. But, um, Krog's been, but Krog's been holding his own, though. I mean, up to this point, I mean, I mean, really, he's been only out of two bases this entire time. Um, his main thing mined out. So, this may be all she wrote. This may be the last push that really Krog can really, uh, like, uh, economically do. Other than trying to put down another Expo, which he might be trying to do. Um, desperately trying to get, get against his five-base Protoss. And, you know, Cryok could have played the passive three, uh, the three base style Terran, but he wanted to be a little bit more aggressive. And it, it seems it hasn't really paid off for him this game. Um, however, though, it may, if he can break through these, uh, these, uh, Dragoons right here, but we have a lot of, uh, of, um, units coming here from DKT, coming from the west to the east, to eastbound. But those Vol uh, those spider are, Delaying for time, but he's actually not sending the vultures into the mineral line here. That's exactly, but that's what he needs to be doing, though. That's the thing. I guess he's trying to put down more spider mines. If he can siege, he can siege that mineral line here. That would be absolutely huge, guys. Going into this, 41 SCPs to 67 probes right there. That's a very healthy worker count here, but it looks like this will be taken out. And without any economic damage being done from Cryok to DKT, uh, DKT will take this game, guys. So pretty entertaining. Terran versus Protoss for sure. And uh, we're going to go to the next game, guys. Um, so Croc does lose game one. I'm a DKT fan. Awesome. Awesome game. I wonder what college...